Have you ever wondered if you're fueling your body right with a balanced intake of vegetables, fruits, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and staying hydrated? Hello folks and welcome to the Castelli Podcast. In this episode, we are moving away from writer interviews, how to dress guides and the technical aspects of Castelli's performance enhancing products. Instead, we will delve into a topic that can enhance not only our athletic performance, but also the quality of our daily lives. It's a subject that has been debated for years and is relevant to every one of us, sports, nutrition. And to be more specific, we will explain why a balanced diet, including fruits, vegetables, carbohydrates, protein, and good fats, is required to supply and support your biological machine. And to make sure we're in good hands, I've invited a sports performance nutritionist who works closely with world tour cyclists, elite triathletes, ultra athletes, runners, mountaineers, and everyday athletes like you and me. The interview was so jam-packed with good stuff and lasted almost two hours that we, in the end, decided to split it into two episodes. So today we'll be serving you the first almost 45 minutes and the second episode where we will cover micronutrition will go live next week. And if we go a touch long and it's getting long for you, just hit pause and come back when you can because I promise you it will be worth it. So let's dive in. Welcome back, Danny Hofstetter. We are very excited to have our own performance-focused nutritionist chatting to us. Danny, let's start the episode with you telling our listeners a little bit more about yourself and how you ended up where you are today. Well, hi, sir, and thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. If I go way back, I think nutrition or or kind of eating the family table, dinner table, or or whatever meal we're talking was always an, an, an important situation and, and that's already one thing I always told my athletes today as well. You should never only look through the functional perspective if we talk about food. It has a Correct. huge social and emotional aspect for us as well and only if we can take these three kind of topics together then we can make meaningful change. But back to my history. I was active as a tennis player and an endurance athlete for like pretty much all my life. And I discovered that my talents are much more in the endurance realm. And then I I discovered cycling. I was a bit late to the party. And if you're not good enough to make it in one sports, you, you start multi-sports. And that's how right. I made my way into duathlon and triathlon. And, and that was around 95 2000 and and it got pretty strong pretty quickly and and made my way into long distance racing which was kind of the the lion's share of my my career and during my my triathlon years i studied food science because i was always interested in the topic and i was probably too lazy to study medicine so that was kind of a natural a nature science and and was something i was really interested in and then over the years the elite sports aspect combined with food science led me to to sports nutrition i started working with athletes pretty early on and did that as a part-time hustle for many years and 6 years ago i decided to found my own company which I'm working still now today, mainly in in elite sports that can be professional athletes, that can be kind of ambition, ambitious hobby athletes, and a huge width of of, of different sports. So from professional ballet dancers up to mountaineering, pretty much in between. And obviously, my my roots are in endurance sports, and that's also how we met, by the way. Yeah, at the Yolomites Five Thousand event. And endurance is obviously a sport that where nutrition has a pretty direct impact. So every athlete that is is keen on performance had his his experience where nutrition let him down, and there are sports like team sports or different sports where the whole energy metabolism is not so crucial or not directly performance related and and that's why they are not not as involved in in the nutrition questions as as an endurance athlete 
if you hear a little bit of background noise, it's actually because I'm sitting here in a Portland office uh, this week, and I got the warehouse people just right behind that wall. So right here before jumping on the pod with you, I had to ask those guys to turn down the music volume out there, else we would have had Lionel Richie's background voice on the podcast, but uh, I think they're pretty okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> so... And also, again, I want to thank you for giving me some advice before jumping on this trip to Portland because I was struggling with a bad cold before. And then he actually sent me a long text message about everything that I would have to eat and take care about just to have a more speedy recovery. And you know what, Dan? It all helped. It really helped me. Even also your advice on getting rid of uh, not only the cold, but also the jet lag uh, shortly and uh, keeping myself hydrated on the plane and everything. So thanks for that. It's a pleasure. You you realize oh, we're jumping right into the topic because it, it's not just performance related. Uh, I think it, it you you can have an optimization of your nutrition in every yeah. part of your everyday life, right? You're right. So let's let's dive into it. Then I'm super excited. And for those of our listeners that are thinking, oh wait wait wait, I know this guy. I've heard his his voice before. Yes, you probably have. We did an episode with Danny in August where we discussed how to prepare for the Elite Men's Road World Championship in Glasgow, covering topics such as pre-race and doing race nutrition, and how to boost post-race recovery. And we also delved into details like the aero clothing worn by the Italian national team at the Road Worlds and more. So, if you haven't listened to that episode, make sure to add it to your queue list. But back to this week's episode. Danny, let's dive in. Okay, okay then. Try to be concise. Today, we really want to... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> Danny, we really want to focus on what everyday amateur and pro cyclists, endurance athletes and triathletes should be going about with their day-to-day -day nutrition. It's not that one thing that you do once on race day. You know, it's, just, it's literally what you do from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep every single day, compounded over time. No matter how fit you are, you have to have a fuel source to function. So do all the spending and money on nice bike equipment, training and anything you want to do. If you don't have the fuel, you are not moving very well. You're not functioning at all. So can you start us off with some maybe founding principles or fundamentals around what you want cyclists and endurance athletes to understand about day-to-day -day nutrition? Maybe Dan, let's uh, start with the basics and start with eating enough fruits, vegetables on a day-to-day -day basis. Even though we're still trying to eat enough fuel to support training, what should you start thinking of? Okay, I, I mean, if you start with, with uh, fruit and vegetables, uh, the general recommendation is that every active person needs five portion of fruit and vegetable a day. One portion equals about the size of your fist. So if we have different vegetables or fruits, then you can make up that portion guide easily because right. hopefully everybody has his hands every day with them. The fruit and vegetables are important in, in basically three aspects. You have lots of vitamins and minerals that are very essential for us. And then you have the third aspect, which is fiber. Uh, fiber is very important for a healthy gut, for a healthy microbiome. And, yeah. and that's the first kind of dilemma that we hit because as endurance athletes that train a lot, we need to make sure that we don't need too much fiber before our workout because fiber Correct. is ingested very slowly. So. That is an individual thing where you notice, okay, the salad from lunch sits still quite high when I'm going for an intense ride or not. But generally the recommendation is no raw food before a hard training. Have your fiber and, and vegetables rather after your workout. And, and also, of course, if we talk breakfast, make sure you use fruits in the Asian culture, people eat vegetables for, for breakfast as well. But, but generally, mm -hmm. kind of in the Western cuisine, we rather go for fruits and berries uh, for breakfast and have vegetables, salads and stuff for, for lunch or supper. The five servings is a compound number. How would you divide the servings between veggies and fruits? I would say go for two servings of fruit and three servings of vegetables. And of those vegetable servings, make one 
raw, because if we have some food raw, we make sure that we also have enough from the heat sensitive vitamins. And because through cooking, Correct. you have some nutrient losses, right? It is, it is. Actually, I thought it would have been more, but we can maybe go into that a little bit later. What happens if you train your gut to eat more vegetables? I mean, of course, we have the fiber thing. I think that's also something that people need to train their gut for. But you know what? While we're talking, we're just uh, Googling around and found out that only 12% of the European population eats the recommended and general guidelines around fruits and vegetables on a daily basis, which is just crazy. I mean, I mean, a lot of people, they take multivitamins and other things because it's easier or we think that's better for us, but we lose the fibers and other important things for our gut. What do you think about that? Do you recommend any of your athletes to include supplements into the diet? For very high stress situations, let, let's say, I mean, we're, we're heading into an Olympic year for certain sports. It's it's two weeks of, 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 of several disciplines where you have to perform. The preparation is already hard. Then you use a multivitamin as kind of an insurance. But generally, the, the supplements, multivitamins, multiminerals are not necessary when you eat already enough and qualitative fresh food. And that's some point that Correct. I want to focus on because one reason why you have only these 12% getting enough fiber, fruit and vegetables in their diet is unfortunately processed food is, is something that is now kind of the default for many people. And a healthy diet means I buy mainly unprocessed foods, natural ingredients, that, that are not industrialized or, or, or prepared into a convenience meal. And then mm -hmm. we have more nutrients uh, and we have less loss during production and during kind of the whole food chain until it's on my right. plate. Right. You're right. Coming back to also the fiber intake, that extra plus, that extra bonus you get was about eating the real thing versus multivitamins. So, yes. yeah. And then you're probably also going to save your money on it. Go yes, and, and, buy and it. we... we, we call this the kind of the entourage effect where an isolated supplement has a, a lesser efficacy than, than a natural food because the natural food, the, the metrics consisting of fiber, of, of different secondary plant substances and those vitamins that is digested better and, and, and absorbed better than, than an artificial isolated substance. And that's yeah. why these kind of natural environment is, is, is even more important. And so it's one more important, easy yeah. advice I give my athletes is buy food that has very limited amount of, 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 of packaging material because then you have mostly unprocessed foods. And if it, it is packaged in a commercial way, make sure the ingredients list is as, as brief as possible because then you mainly get the raw materials as, as you wish for it. Correct. What's your thoughts then on organic fruits and vegetables versus non-organic? I mean, organic is from an environmental point of view, it's, it's a, a huge plus and I'm, I'm supporting that. But if we look at the literature, you could never prove that organic fruit and vegetables has higher amount of vitamins or, 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 or fiber or, or other nutrients. So there we have to say, if you stick to products that have seen soil, because lots of fruit and vegetables are, are coming from, from uh, growth uh, houses. Um, mm -hmm. What's the right word? Like greenhouses? So for instance, tomato, uh, obviously, if you're in Castelli country, uh, your home turf, you can in eat Italy, tomato, yeah. taste like tomato. And if you buy the yeah. stuff that never seen soil or sun directly, then you buy mostly colored water. And obviously mm. there are less nutrients in the, in, inside as well. So here I would say if you have a chance to buy fruit and vegetables on a farmer's market where you know it's it's been in, in a natural environment, that's good. But there's no proof in organic produced fresh foods contains more nutrients than, than regular produce. That's interesting to hear. As you said, you know, in Denmark, we only grow great tomatoes in summertime and they're, they're never going to be the detailing quality for sure or the south of Europe. But it also depends a little bit on 
just eating the right things. You, you, I mean, it's probably more important than to wherever you live than eat seasonal fruits and vegetables. And then you probably also get it fresh near where you live. Yes, and and one thing I, I, I'm not saying back in the days everything was better, but but since the means of conserving, preserving food was 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 less sophisticated, like let's say 70 years ago, people had to choose right what they eat in winter in terms of fruit and vegetables. Yeah. And and if we look back and see what they had as seasonal and fresh food, then we also make most things right in, in our daily nutrition. Yeah. And today you have the opportunity <laughs> to eat strawberries all year, no matter where they come from. Yeah, berries coming from Peru or yeah, all the places. For instance, yeah. yeah. And it's not a discussion whether this is morally or environmentally meaningful or, or, or wise, but you, if you eat seasonal and local, you can make sure the food is as fresh as possible. And it, it's about the yeah. freshness. And then you can say it's, it's rich in nutrients and, and, and we that actually... lost a bit the taste. In, in Also, let's say now in Europe, we're heading into winter and the winter vegetables yeah. are not as fancy as the asparagus and the berries and etc. But you could you could have it easily if you if you go to these more like roots and, and and beets that are winter vegetables and you get the whole nutrients that you need as well okay oh, that makes sense so that as well leads me to the next question dan when it comes to fiber so the only time that you would not eat fruit and vegetables due to the fiber intake would be when you're carbo loading the day before or on race days just to avoid that uh, that fiber intake, you just want to mm. keep that as low as possible, correct? Yeah, I mean, it, it all depends on how hard are we get we're heading out. Uh, as a routine cyclist, you can eat like even heavy foods and go for an easy spin, and and you don't suffer. If if you're not as experienced and and the intensity is, is kind of relatively higher, then you need to make sure that the meal you eat last before heading onto your bike is is easy digestible. And I think if we're talking fiber, we automatically talk carbohydrates. And and right. car first thing, yes, as athletes and everybody who's listening to the Castelli podcast is is mostly active. I think makes sense. And so our need for carbohydrates is increased. There's been a lot of discussion about low carb, no carb, keto, paleo, whatever form of diet. Yeah. In the last 15 years, we had amazing scientific studies that proved the endurance athlete that eats more carbs and eats them to the right time has a better performance in training, in recovery, in competition as well and what you refer to is uh, carbohydrates come in different forms and shapes and paces because i say pace because a carb source that contains more fiber is digested slower and mm -hmm. releases its energy into our bloodstream more steady so like it is the satiety is longer uh, the blood sugar increase is is more steady and, and more gradually then when yeah. i eat simple sugar that gives me a, a blood sugar rise that is uh, immediate like within 10 or 15 minutes but the, the sharp cliff that we or the drop of the blood sugar is is as fast and so this blood sugar roller coaster is something we want to avoid and the tricky part when we compare everyday nutrition and what we need during exercise is we try to have a steady blood sugar throughout. That means throughout, in yeah. passive hours. So when I'm not riding, I try to eat slow carbs, lots of fiber, unprocessed carbohydrates. So the whole wheat stuff, cereals that are not processed. So instead of just plain pasta, I probably go for quinoa, brown rice, whole wheat, wheat products. I'm not saying wheat is bad per se, but if you have it refined as pasta, as couscous uh, or, or white bread, then you get to this kind of rapid carbo, uh, carbohydrate. And mm -hmm. and the, the closer we get to exercise, so let's say 90 minutes before a ride, during a ride or ride after, 
that's when we need the fast carbs because the energy goes into our bloodstream and our muscles pretty immediately. We use it while we're exercising and because the hormonal response to food is completely different when we're active. Then mm -hmm. this is the time where we can hit the high sugar intake, where we can eat white bread, where we can have a ripe banana and it's, it's not detrimental to your health. Right. And the same right. goes to, to finish that off with the fiber yeah. amount. A proper sports bar, like an energy bar that is made for your active phase, contains the least amount of fiber, a, a good one, mm -hmm. because fiber yeah. slows down the absorption rate and, and the time it takes until the energy hits your muscles. And, and if you eat fruit during exercise or shortly before, then the fiber amount slows down the energy release. The but with fruit, release, yeah. it also depends on the ripeness of the fruit. Like immature fruit Correct. or unripe fruit contains more fiber. Ripe fruit has, has more sugar. You can taste that because it's sweeter, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, it is, it is sweeter. And I think I'm kind of dragging you down into a rabbit hole here. Uh, on something that we we, <laughs> we we probably will be covering also a little bit later when talking about fueling for race day and or just a long event or a weekend ride. If I eat raw vegetables versus cooked vegetables, is there any difference there from my stomach for it? Yes, because comes the to cooking process breaks down cellulose or, or makes yeah. it easier digestible. That's why yeah. raw salad, vegetables, whatever is is sitting long in your stomach and the the passage from the stomach into the gut and then the time it takes to absorb it in the gut is much longer than it was cooked well before right do you think grand tour cyclists in the evening do they steer away from cooked vegetables i think in during a grand tour they definitely eat yeah. vegetables not huge amounts because the amount of energy they need to put in their system is giving you a certain bulk. And mm -hmm. if you eat a lot of vegetables, the satiety kicks in earlier and you're you're not hungry for the carbs you need to eat as well. I mean, nowadays, Grand Tour cyclists, apart from what they've consumed already on the bike and, and right after a stage, they eat more than a kilo rice per day. I mean, a kilo white rice mm -hmm. in a day. Mm -hmm. It's massive. Yeah. It's not yeah. fun. That's crazy. It is not fun. And you need to train your gut for that. That's for sure. Yes, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Dan, let's go back to fruits and veggies. In your opinion, is there any priority for fruits and veggies over others when we're looking from a performance perspective? I normally say because nutrition advice needs to be applicable and simple. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you think too much about it and you go cuckoo. And I always say eat the rainbow. So the different colors of, of vegetables and fruit, they bring you different nutrients. And if you have a huge variety and, and it is colorful, then you can be quite sure that you get everything in, in the right amount. And that's also from a culinary point of view, more interesting than if you have it very kind of monotonous. And, and the colors by itself, they give you different antioxidants and the good blend from the green to the red to the yellow ones is actually what your body needs. And right. that goes for not so active people as, as much as, as athlete, athletes, obviously. As athletes, yeah. Because Definitely. only if you like it, you eat plenty of it and you shouldn't like muscle yeah. it down every day. That's not fun. <laughs> so instead of like sticking to bananas and an apple a day and go tick, like job done people that should try incorporate lots of different colors and in particular try and eat seasonally as well because we know that fruits and vegetables grown in season are better for us and more nutrition rich than ones that are forced to grow out of season so to my next question with the minimum recommendation guideline of five servings of fruits and veggies a day is that a strong minimum like would you be better off doubling it and you're going to be way better off does it just get better as you go bigger um, what do you think i think if if we look at the increased amount an athlete eats versus a, a, a rather passive human being then you automatically get to higher 
volumes of food. And there's no need to stick at the five portions. The five are a, a healthy minimum or a healthy optimum. Mm -hmm. But you will not double or triple the effect if you eat six, seven or eight portions. It, it's like I said, if you eat more than the risk, the potential risk of having some deficiencies in, in certain nutrients are obviously smaller. But I see more athletes eating a lot of fruit and vegetables that throughout this amount. And that's what I, I just mentioned with the Grand Tour rider, because that gives you some saturation as well, that they are not enough uh, eating the more energy dense foods, carbohydrates, fats and protein. And, and so if, if people are eating too much fruit and, and, and vegetables, they most often have a bit of a, a lack in the other departments. So that needs to be balanced. And, and that needs to be balanced. Yeah. So, so more so, is not so always folks, more. So. <laughs> no. And plus, I, I assume you also, you can also do some, some damage that you said earlier. If well, it's, it's too much of damage, one thing versus the other. Having a, a really high fiber intake, and uh, it can also be too high, accelerates your digestion in an amount where you miss to absorb enough energy and nutrients because the time the food takes in passing through your stomach and your gut is, is so short, then short, you cannot yeah. absorb effectively. And, and yeah. your stool gets very loose. And that's why yeah. more and more we talk also about stool quality and how the digestion works. Yeah. Yeah. So, so folks, make sure to eat different colors. All the rainbow colors that Danny, he mentioned earlier, it's good for us. And eat also in season as well. And when it comes to colors, I mean, I think it's easy also to get a little bit of everything, having that mix of different colors, because as we know, oranges and or citrus fruits, they're really high in vitamin C. But then the other colors like purple colors and things are higher in different other vitamins as well. So yeah, make sure to eat the whole good mix of all colors. Danny, what are the main vegetables that you would categorize in your top five for an athlete? I always incorporate leafy greens so whether it's spinach broccoli kale and their relatives because we see that they contain a lot of good fiber different fiber types that are good for your microbiome and an ideal amount of, of nutrients and antioxidants and you can be very creative you can eat them raw you can eat them cooked uh, combine them with different uh, different uh, vegetables and then also cereals um, so the leafy greens, they are kind of your, your number one. And then I, I would say beets, whether it's beetroot, whether it's uh, the winter uh, vegetables uh, like um, pastinax. Uh, I think that's the same w word in English, pastinaken in German. I think the English word is parsnip and then pastinaca saltiva is the more scientific and Latin word. But I think we got most of the languages covered here. <laughs> what grows yeah. in the soil yeah. to, gives you very uh, different blend of nutrients. And, and uh, one, one popular item that contains in this family is carrots. And then apart from that, you have obviously tomato, and, 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 and the red family or, 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 or what, which kind of combines then as again, the colors and also from, from a meal perspective, yeah, how you can bring in a certain variety, fiber, nutrients, and, and just a, a menu composition that makes sense. So just as to wrap this up, so guys go for colors, rainbow colors. And do save your money, please, on multivitamin pills. Go and get a fruit and a vegetable box for half the price and you do so much better job for your health. Okay, we need fiber in our diet. We talked about that before. Like it's a hard balance as an endurance athlete. Too much fiber is not good either. You mentioned that earlier. But you still need that for all of your little gut microbes to be happy to produce so many different things in, in our gut and our immune system is mostly in our gut. Exercise is a stress factor and if you are doing a lot of it, we need to have a really robust immune system. And one of the ways that we can do that is eating fiber and eating fruits and vegetables as we pointed out before. Could it be a problem if we have 
too much fiber in the stomach? And what is the recommended daily fiber intake for a normal trained athlete? The recommendation currently is uh, at 30 grams, three zero per day. The general cyclists I see, I mean, they let's say they, they ride their bike for 10 hours a week. Mm. The amount of food that they need in terms of calories, they easily reach 30 grams when they eat fresh and unprocessed food. So that's an yeah. easy feature to, to, to manage. Normally, if we have the energy needs covered and you don't go to excessive amounts of fiber, you arrive probably at 45, maybe 50 grams. And that's the, if you eat most, mostly whole wheat foods and, and cereals during the day. And I think everything over 30 grams gives me plenty of fiber for the gut, for the gut microbiome, for mm -hmm. a, a, an easy and healthy digestion. One thing that we cannot tell yet because the microbiome research is kind of a very early or, or, or immature thing yet it's that there's lots of research going into it now but the most honest opinion is we know a lot but we know mostly that we know nothing yet because it's okay. very complex it's billions of of different bacteria and yeasts that are interconnected and de interdependent of each other and right. There's a lot of analytics uh, around. You can send your poo into a laboratory and you get some results. But currently, and, and many will now disagree, but the current state of the art is each analysis only gives you a very momentarily view. And the dynamics of these populations in your gut are so rapid that there is no test that can tell you your gut microbiome is healthy, is, is in dysbiosis, so the, 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 mm -hmm. the, the balance is, is not intact, and, and you should take X, Y, Z, and then and you're better off. And that's now what you said. The best thing you can do is eating, eat, eating enough fiber, and what's very important is different kinds of fiber. So vary your vegetables, because there you got different types of fiber, one of the best things you can get is is barley and oats because they contain two sorts of fiber that are super interesting, easy to digest, very good for your gut health, but also not interrupting with, with uh, sports, so, so kind of sitting long in your stomach. And if, again, it, it, it might sound boring, but again, variety is kind of key. And if you have different fiber, what we call prebiotic, because it's the food for the microbes in, in, in your gut intestine, yeah. then they're happy, then they have enough energy, and then they produce these short-chain fatty acids that are feeding into your immune system, that are making that sh making sure that the, the gut-brain axis is, is fully functioning, that we don't have any mental problems because lots of mental issues such as depression or, or low mood is based in the gut as well. And, and so enough fiber makes definite sense. And you get Correct, to this, yeah. again, if you're not only eating processed foods and if you're more heading towards the whole food, whole, uh, whole wheat stuff that contains lots of grains and, and fiber, yeah. Would it make sense for a cyclist or an athlete to spend any money on probiotic pills just to keep the, the gut happy or in cases where maybe you're coming, you've been underwater and you're coming trying to you know recover like I did last week from a cold or a flu or something. You mentioned something very important that is stress. Stress, whether it's mental stress, a huge workload from, from work and or sports acts like almost an, an antibiotic. Antibiotics kill your gut microbiome as well, such as other bacteria. That's why we yeah. take it in, as yeah. a medical device. And, and stress can really suppress the, the gut microbiome. And currently, probiotics make sense, especially after an antibiotic treatment, because you have to kind of reintroduce them into your body. But the current trend shows that natural foods uh, are a better way to propagate the good growth of, of micro mm -hmm. 
microbacteria in, in, in your gut. That your is, gut, yeah. again, fiber, so prebiotics and probiotics from natural foods. That's fermented food, fermented vegetables, that's your yogurt, your, your dairy products. And yes, you can accelerate with a good probiotic, the, the recovery process. But at the moment, it's not proven that taking probiotics regularly or at intervals that you can have a general better state of health. What we see okay. though, and that's kind of the, the stepping stone towards the performance nutrition or, or fueling for events like uh, ultra events, grand tours that go longer and, 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 and you need to fuel and, and kind of abuse your gut day in, day out because you have such a high energy turnover and, and food consumption. Preventive probiotic treatment can avoid or can reduce GI issues. So, so whether it's diarrhea, whether it's bloating, whether it's cramping, if we preventatively take a probiotic before such an event, we can reduce the risk of, of GI distress. So gastrointestinal ah, okay. distress. Yeah. yeah, because that was actually my next question to you when talking about the big stress there is around a grand tour, but but even there was a post recovery from an Ironman or another ultra. So should we talk about the macronutrients? I think there are eight, but let's talk about maybe the core four, like carbohydrate, protein, fat, and if I'm not wrong, then water. Yes. Those are the most important ones. And I start with water because basically our body consists depending on our sex and, and, and muscle mass between 65 and, and, and 70% of water. That's it for the first episode of Sports Nutrition. Tune in to the second episode next week where we'll discuss micronutrients and fueling strategy for race day. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to subscribe, give us a five-star rating to help us be seen by other cyclists or athletes in the algorithm. And if you want to suggest a future podcast topic, just shoot us a line at podcast at castellicycling.com or hit us up on socials. I'll drop Danny's contact details and other important information from this episode in the show notes. Danny, it's been amazing to have you on and we hope that athletes continue to learn more about this stuff, including ourselves, because it's just so important and I really appreciate everything that you're doing. The general comments you're making are really helpful to the people who are listening. And most cyclists or athletes are in the same boat. They are undereducated. And it's people like you that can make everyday athletes become better versions of themselves if they're just willing to put the time into listening to the advice. Thanks again for taking the time and see you next week. I can't, I can't wait to, to get back. And uh, I'm happy if I can shed some light on um, simple tips that can make athletes cope better with. with no, we appreciate it. We, we appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Thanks again, man. I know it's getting late there in Europe at the moment. And you also have a call, I think, with an athlete, one of your your clients here in a few minutes. So uh, I thank you again Excellent. for taking the time to, to meet you, up. Thank you, sir. Take care, eat well, and uh, ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Take care, everyone. Ride safe and see you next week.